Regular abductions, closure of schools, restriction of movement and forced levies by bandits, all making living in Zamfara states difficult. We'll be getting an insight into how things really are in the state. An Enugu state joins Ondo as the latest uh, state to ban open grazing in southern Nigeria. In the north, some state governors give orders restricting animal movement. And university is now to determine own entry-level cut-off marks following jams removal of uniform cut-offs. Welcome to The Breakfast on Post TV Africa. I am Annetta Felix. And I am Osaogi Ogbona. Good morning and thanks for joining us on The Breakfast. Uh, this very well, little wet rainy morning uh, here on uh, Plus TV Africa. Indeed. Uh, big stories across Nigeria, especially um, regarding security. Let's start from Kaduna. Um, yesterday, the Kaduna State um, um, Commissioner for Internal Security and Home Affairs, Samuel Irwan, made some security announcements. He said that Kaduna State was banning um, open grazing, the transportation of cattle out of, you know, from other states into Kaduna and the transportation of cattle from within Kaduna state out, you know, off the state has been prohibited. He also mentioned that um, the ban will take effect immediately um, from yesterday, the 2nd of September 2021, and that the cow market, which usually holds every Tuesday in Kaduna, in Kaduna state, not local government area, has actually, you know, just been suspended with immediate effect. And this is on the back of all the security drama we've been seeing in recent recent time. And uh, we know that Kaduna State now joins a list of other states that have banned open grazing in this state. It's the third northern state, um, Zamfara State and Katsina State have also banned transborder um, transportation of livestock. And when we bring it down to the south, um, Enugu State has passed the anti-open grazing bill. You know, it's a bill that prohibits open grazing. And we know how this open grazing thing has really um, just made worse the class between farmers and herders, we see how its effects are spilling into food security and how it seems that the cost of um, food prices are just going up. So um, at the plenary yesterday, the Enugu Assembly passed this anti-open grazing bill. Um, so basically, people in the South are saying it's now left for other states to begin to do so. Um, they say they're looking into Imo and the rest. Remember, Southern governors have passed the resolution to go ahead and ban open grazing in the states with effect from September 1st. We've seen Enugu State um, lead the way. Um, let's see what the next few days um, look like for other states in southern Nigeria and how that will work vis-a-vis -vis the um, grazing reserve policy, so to speak, that the president is set to rule out across the country. Yeah, well, um, I think Ondo State actually started uh, before Enugu. Roti Dulu signed it on the 1st of September. Um, and then it goes yesterday. Um, so there is that. Um, but, um, you know, one thing, you know, is, and maybe, you know, a couple of times more that we've said it, you know, how um, cattle has become, the, you know, one of the biggest conversations in Nigeria in 2021. Not information technology, not, you know, great infrastructure, not, um, you know, uh, great strides in any other direction, but cattle, um, which is really, really heartbreaking uh, to find ourselves in this place. But, there is that. Um, in, in my response to this, um, I think, you know, that it's important that we also get to clarify that not all of the killings and the crisis and the murder that has happened in the last few years has really been because of cattle. Um, a lot of them are really just murders that happen in the middle of the night that go on, unreported or uninvestigated um, and everyone just moves on. So, you know, it's important that we get to distinguish between the, those that they have termed farmers and herders clashes um, uh, and the ones that are just outright murders by militia or, uh, or bandits or whoever they are that we still have not been able to actually identify, unknown gunmen, um, as they have also been called. Um, a couple of days ago, there was also an unknown helicopter that fired into a boat in River State that still has not got, we, Nigerian people haven't gotten any answers as to what exactly that was about. Um, and these are, you know, hundreds of incidents that just, you know, go and, you know, happen rather. And we move on, you know, 24, 48 hours later, everyone has moved on waiting for the next incident to occur. So there is that. 
Um, with regards to the northern states, so Kaduna, Sokoto, Katsina, you know, the ones that I have on record uh, currently that have banned interstate uh, movement of cattle, um, f my response to that is, um, what I see this as is, eventually, um, people are going to have to face the truth. Because I remember that years ago, months ago, these you know, same states would have you know, sworn that they would never do anything concerning banning grazing or banning you know, anything concerning cattle. I mean, I mean, it was basically free for all. Rear your cattle, do whatever you want to do with your cattle here. Let the southern governors do whatever they choose. You know, that's their business. And it, it felt like they took a totally different stance from what the southern governors were doing. But eventually, they're going to have to face the truth. And you know, whether you accept it or not, you will face what the truth is concerning security in your region. Zamfara State has shut schools down, and that's one of the things we're going to be talking about today. Um, Zamfara State is the you know, first one that has completely ordered all schools to be closed. Eventually, you will face the truth. Whether you, are, you want to play politics with it or not, eventually you will face the truth. And those, you know, including those who you know, completely turn a blind eye, northern leaders, northern elders, traditional leaders, and, and whatnot, that have decided to stay silent while their communities and their villages are being ravaged by these criminal elements, eventually you will get to face the truth. And you know, either it hits home or you know, it hits very, very close to home. A friend of mine was saying yesterday that his um, uncle was kidnapped in Edo State, um, and they currently haven't heard anything you know, from the kidnappers or from whoever took him. They're really just, at this point, gathering as much money as possible, calling all family members to you know, send as much money as possible and wait for that phone call. But mm -hmm. that's exactly where we are, and, and that may be one of those cases that just really goes unreported. Um, for Northern State governors, eventually you will get to face and be open with what exactly the truth is, because you cannot continue to play politics forever. Regardless of what state you're from, you will not continue to play politics forever. Eventually, you will get to accept what the reality on ground is and how dangerous things really have become in, in those parts of the country. So terrible a situation here that we find, found ourselves. And um, when, when we think things couldn't get any, any worse than this, you may have... Um, the bad news we're getting from the um, financial um, sector in the country, the state of our economy seems to not be getting any better. And that's because the Nigerian Naira has hit an all-time low of 5.30. This 5.30 to a dollar we're talking about um, was at, was as at um, Wednesday. But um, speaking with people who are in the BDC space, they say the Naira to a dollar right now is at 550 550 naira to a dollar. Can you just imagine? Now, we know that one of the reasons for this is the heightened pressure on the naira, and that's basically after the central bank governor, Godin Omefile, controversially suspended the sale of Forex to BDCs. That really has had a very terrible, terrible impact on you know the value of the Naira right now. Um, the CBN governor had said that these um, BDCs are basically encouraging and, and engaging in um, money laundering practices, even though the Association of BDC Operators in Nigeria have said that's a lie. But it's, it's really been a challenge for us trying to peg, you know, first of all, the government has tried to peg the official rate at um, $412. Uh, but this is has also raised concerns that even from the side of the bankers, they would definitely hold this forex so they can sell in the black market and you know get a better deal. And um, when we look back at the year 2015, March 2015, when the Buhari administration, when the Buhari team were campaigning um, for power, they put you know up posters saying that um, it was 260 naira to a dollar at that time, and you know asking Nigerians, is this okay? And saying that it was time for us to speak up, but. Um, many years after, it's the second term, we see that um, from 260 naira, it's now 550 naira to a dollar at this time. So is that okay? <laughs> I was trying to hold myself back from, from you know, reacting to the, um, you know, the campaign promises. You know, there was also the one naira to, uh, you know, equal to a dollar was part of the was part of the campaign. But good thing, President Buhari says, when I leave, Nigerians are going to feel the benefits of what I'm doing today. They're going to so. realize the benefits of my administration. <laughs> Absolutely. So there are people who have said, wow. you know, that, you know, it will be lucky if we don't need 800 or 1,000 by the time we're getting to 2023. Uh, the, way, <laughs> the way things are... So, so it's, it's really the way terrible. Things are going. Yes, it is it's terrible. Ter it's and and it's, it's scary mostly because of how this affects cost of living in Nigeria. And, and 
a generator. I've been struggling to buy a generator for a couple of days now um, <laughs> because the price that I knew <laughs> a generator was early in 2020 is not the same price that it is now. And that's pretty much the same thing with everything. You know, have you found out how much it is to buy a car in Nigeria today? Cars that used to be, you know, 1.2 million a couple of years ago, now you can beg to get it for 3 million or 3.5 million. That is the problem with the devaluation of the Naira. Because Absolutely. definitely, when you devalue the Naira, see, okay, let's talk about the benefits. You have the benefits that export to be cheaper or exports is good. It's going to, it's going to um, basically, no, for those who are in that space, it's basically yes. going to, you know, increase export. Yes, when the Naira is devalued, things are are going to be expensive to import so people are going to buy indigenously you know locally manufactured items will def definitely sell local manufacturers would make money but when you look at the flip side of the valuation it hurts our economy because first of all you can't import any more inflation is going to be on the rise which is what we're seeing right now so anything that is not manufactured in nigeria as long as it is not manufactured in this country you have to bring it through the through whatever border you are going to pay heavily for it. And that's what we're facing right now in the country. Absolutely. Uh, could we have made better, you know, um, economic policies? Maybe, yes. We have an economic management team. We have some of, you know, the best brains that were, you know, um, um, recruited a couple of, like a year or two years ago uh, to be a part of the economic management team by oh. the current administration, okay. including Charles Soludo, who was a former CBN governor. Um, how much do their, you know, do their words or do, does their work get to the ear of the president and to the CBN governor? How relevant have they really been since they've been in that position and including the vice president there's so many people who have been absolutely brilliant minds that you would expect would be able to advise better um, are we making the best decisions are we you know taking knee-jerk approach uh, you know to certain things that is affecting the naira how many of the things or the you know the new laws that the cbn governor has put in place is helping in any way to improve on the, you know on, our, um, um, on um, the naira's story it's, it's really not in any way uh, being beneficial. I'm more worried about how Nigerians, regular Nigerians, will be able to afford living in Nigeria um, in the next few years because that's where the biggest challenge is. It's not the billionaires and the politicians who really don't have to suffer as much as, you know, the common Nigerian who has to buy food stuff, who needs to pay house rent, who needs to pay school fees, who needs to buy a new car, who needs to buy a new phone, random little things like that, buy a new laptop. Um, th there's so many of all these things that will be affected as the Naira continues, you know, and its value continues to fall. So, Do we see a future where it might come down? It doesn't look like it from the way things are going in, in any way. So, um, and, you know, I, I would also say that um, whenever the National Bureau of Statistics or any of the government agencies put out um, information that, oh, you know, uh, inflation figures have, have dropped, you know, or we are looking better economically, you know, those are just figures that if they don't translate to a better living standard for the common Nigerian, then they're totally irrelevant. Um, you can use those figures and put them up on the internet and brag with them, but if they don't in any way change the reality on ground for the common Nigerian, then they are totally irrelevant. And he has, it, it's, it's of no use to anybody saying that, you know, you know we're you know, defeating inflation and inflation figures are, are, are coming down, some of all of that. So when really we look at what's happening with our Naira and how it's been so devalued that there's really, really, it's almost nothing to write them about. It, it takes me back to when the CBN um, went ahead to um, freeze the bank accounts of four startups um, in the asset management space who help Nigerians buy foreign stocks. And it's because of things like this. The Naira really has no value the way it is now in the, you know, the global economy. It's very, it's not, not competitive. So you can understand the concerns of Nigerians who go ahead and take their money, you know, change it into dollars, buy other foreign currencies, save their money in domiciliary account, and decide to invest in foreign stocks. Because really, when you look at, you know, the money you had in the bank 10 years ago, five years ago, and you take, you know, what, what that money is worth, its value in the market and what it is now, it almost seems like nothing. Yeah. So you can un definitely understand where Nigerians are coming from when they decide to invest in foreign stocks. But it seems like the CBN is not doing much to make sure that our Naira is strengthened. And yet when people who try to find a way out of that mess do so, they're now clamped down on. So it's like we're, we're in a fix. We're, it's, well, it's just terrible. You know, in seems to be in, like in response to that, you know, I think it's also, you know, we shouldn't, it, it would also be fair to say that when the CBN also spots corruption or spots, you know, mismanagement of the Naira and mismanagement of foreign currency, it's also... You are know, those not just excuses? They, no, no. You know, Many I mean, would argue so you, those you, are just you, excuses. So, well, you can, you can you just say that they're excuses, but I believe that there's also... Um, the right, the CBN also has the right and, you know, should be able to take that step when they spot some of all those things 
um, and um, of course make new laws to protect the, the Naira and protect uh, the country from you know criminals and from fraudulent people. Um, it's also important that they do that, but I think it's 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 you know very very critical the way that those things are managed and the way that they take those steps because of the after effect that it will have. Um, the CBN governor, or the you know uh, Nigeria's economic team, is not necessarily going to see a fraudulent activity going on in BDCs or wherever and turn a blind eye simply because they need to you know ensure that the the, the, the Naira is protected. They need to take whatever steps are um, you know um, available, but. While taking those steps, you know, there should be a very, very, you know, very, very knowledgeable advisory team that can say, okay, don't do it this way, let's do it in a totally different way, so that it doesn't in any way have, you know, a negative after effect on the Naira. Mm. But this is where we are, you know, and we can only hope that it gets better. Um, but how does it get, get better if we don't um, diversify our, our um, modes of um, um, uh, generating wealth for Nigeria? We're still mm. mostly focused on oil. Um, the current administration made a lot of promises concerning agriculture and information technology, some of all of that, which, you know, don't exist currently. Um, our final top trend story. You know, if you have doubts about the coronavirus vaccine, the executive uh, director of the National Primary Healthcare Development Agency, Dr. Faisal Shraibu, is trying to clear them. Now, he spoke yesterday basically urging Nigerians to go ahead and take the COVID-19 vaccines, saying that they are safe and, you know, these, these vaccines have gone through all the, rudim all the rudimentary checks and they're good for you. So he made this plea yesterday. And um, let me read quotes for you. Um, Dr. Shwaibu said, I don't know what the rumor mongers gain in saying what they say about the vaccines. As a medical practitioner for more than three decades, I can confirm to you that what we have is very good and safe for Nigerians. I encourage every Nigerian to have confidence in the COVID-19 vaccines. It's critical in tackling the virus and we encourage you to have confidence in the system. Now, when I saw the response to this, I cracked up so bad yesterday. The story says COVID-19 vaccines are safe. Take them. FG. People said Nigerians don't, or we don't want FG begs Nigerians. <laughs> so Nigerians really have turned everything to a joke in the country. And it's sad that regarding the COVID-19 vaccines, um, it seems that not enough information has been put out there regarding how safe it is. You know, there's still an information gap. There are still people who believe that the COVID-19 vaccine is this and that. They have their conspiracy theories. I am still talking to my landlady to today to take the vaccine. She says, no, I'm covered with the blood of Jesus. And there are many people who think the same way. So I really have no idea, have no clue on how to advise the government regarding what to do to turn our minds around regarding taking the COVID-19 vaccines. But the thing is, vaccine hesitancy is still very big here in Nigeria, especially in, I can even expand that bracket to the rest of Africa, because you see uh, vaccination um, figures, even though, you know, they come out here and there to give you COVID-19 um, briefing and they tell you, oh, it's in the millions. But you realize there were over 200 million people and the percentages are very low. So I have no clue what, what it will take Nigerians to have confidence in the system to go ahead and take those vaccines to protect themselves and their families. But the thing is, the government is pleading and pleading, asking Nigerians to take the jab. Absolutely, yeah. Vaccine hesitancy, um, you know, is something that Nigeria would have to deal with, mostly because of the, you know, numerous reasons it does exist. Um, there's also been the religious reasons or, or aspects where people or pastors, you know, have come out to say, don't take the vaccine as long as you're covered by the blood, you know. And then there's also those who really don't even know anything about COVID-19 or believe that it is real. Um, so there's numerous uh, reasons why, you know, that does exist, you know. But I also believe that um, as we try to encourage more people to take the vaccines, you know, we should also, you know, find ways to get even more vaccines into the country um, the, to be readily available um, and work hand in hand. Um, a lot of people don't believe, in, you know, thing until they become victims or until they see it with their own eyes. That's when they believe some of all those things. Um, and, you know, sadly, that's where we are. So there's a lot more work that needs to be done by Ministry of Information, by the um, NCDC and some of all those, you know, bodies coming together to en um, encourage and, of course, to educate Nigerians better with regards to vaccination. Indeed. And um, that's it on our top trending stories for you today. We'll take a break here and return with Off the Press. Stay with us.